What's going on, everybody? Colton Cronger here, and my beautiful wife, Chelsea Cronger. Hello, everybody. And this is episode one of Anxiety Confessions. And um, it's really cool. We kind of like created this part. Uh, originally, like when we launched Anxiety Hackers, we weren't thinking that we were going to do this. But after getting some awesome feedback about like the book and stuff, because like in the book, we kind of like go over more like the how-tos and like the, the just... The scientific side of things and the diagnosis and the specific wordings and definitions and a little more... Yeah, I wanted to make it like less about me, but it ended up kind of bite me, but it's actually it ended up being a blessing because now we get to create these. Um, we're, now we get to kind of like dive more into our story and, um, and it's cool. We, we started today just by writing down like different stories and stuff and so we're just going to kind of dive in and see what happens. Like, we made the agreement, like, you know what, we might argue, we might fight, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, <laughs> there's no, like, we're not gonna, like, I want this to be, like, unfiltered. Just the real, the real aspect of not only a relationship side of things, but a personal side of things on how we could have done things better, or we might have done something that really worked that we want to share with you, and we, we didn't put it in the book or whatever, so... Just the real side of our life and just seeing us up, up close and personal, unfiltered, no cuts, no nothing. So yeah. it's I'm excited about this. Me too, me too. Yeah. So, so. it's cool. So we'll share like a, a story, uh, like a, a big, a big story. And then like just kind of go into like maybe like what we could have done or like. Or, or what, did. Or, or what we did that helped right. or worked or like looking back now where we are what we would have done in that time yeah. so that maybe if you experience anything along these lines, you can do the same for yourself. Or it just might be entertaining and funny. Or pure entertainment better than Netflix. <laughs> because some of them are funny. <laughs> yes, yeah, great. But uh, I guess like to, to kick off the anxiety confessions, like we talked about like, uh, we got one story that just like really stands out and um, I don't even know where to start. Would you know where to start? So I guess I would start with everybody, if you've read the book, have or just kind of know Colton's story or my story, that we, when we first met, he was out of the Navy, and he was homeless, and he was trying to start his own business, coming right out of a homeless shelter. He worked, my, 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 my best friend and um, her brother worked for him, la di da di da um, so um, we had, we had to just go with what we had at that point. So long story short, we ended up needing to live on my parents' boat. Um, and so we packed up, I don't remember which dogs we had at that time, but we yeah. probably had at least two dogs, so, packed up what we had. So originally like what, what happened was, yeah, we were living in the barn and we were getting ready to move out of the barn. Like we thought that we were upgrading to my grandmother's house, right? And, um, he has more like a information. So yeah, we were, we were moving to my grandmother's house and we had all of our stuff in a truck that we didn't own. And we pull into the driveway, we get in, open the house and it was like, it was bug infested. It was like, uh, it should, I feel like it should have been, it would have been condemned if it was a, uh, an sorry, apartment Mom. or something. It's yeah, okay. Sorry, we still love you. You didn't take care of your house. Um, so it was like this condemned building. So I was like, gosh, we moved out. We can't go back to the barn. Like, where are we going to go? And then, uh, my dad had this, this, uh, houseboat on Lake Texoma that I think was also condemned. And then he bought it really cheap. My dad's just a busy body. Yeah. And just worked and fixed it up and it was beautiful. So there was like a living area, a front deck sort of, uh, space that wasn't really fixed up as much. And then underneath was a bathroom and two sort of twin beds and it was the nicest area. So that's where we were going to be sleeping and we had the dogs like up in the living area. There was like a TV. It was really nice. But um, if anybody knows about lake life, I guess I, so to, to preface this as well, I'm not a, I don't really care too much about bugs, wasps, spiders, um, stuff like that. Colton is not a fan. Time out. I feel like I look really white. So do I. Okay. Oh, maybe move your arm. No, let me see if this light works. So, like, I think maybe because I have long so sleeves too. You get darker. Do you get darker? I can't even see myself. My eyeballs look like a raccoon. Oh, here, open that window. There you go. Well, let me open this one. Hold on. What? Oh, no. that looks better. Look at that. Now I look darker. Like I was looking so white with that light. No, 
babe, you can't see my eyes. Like, you can't. No. I liked. Oh. No. No, I liked it how it was. Can you just keep your left arm down hey, so you, you don't look as white? Yeah, you turn on the Oh, God, that's great. Okay, that's, that's maybe better. I think this side is... How is that better? Okay, well, I don't like this as much, but... Do you want to shut that window? I think this looks good. So, anyways... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not there yet. Yeah, I was just looking too yellow. Now you look yellow. I'm okay with yellow, just not white. Yes. Well, we got a yellow filter on the light. And I've been looking at the light so much I can see you. Okay. I like crossing my legs too. I'm more comfortable that way. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, uh, so we got to the boat, right? And it had no. And it was so used saying it had no electricity. Uh, had part of it worked and part of it didn't. It had. Well, you had it. Sorry. No running water, right? Um, what? Yes, it did. The boat? Oh, gosh. I don't, I don't remember. remember. It was... Uh. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just saying, like, um, those of you that have been on a boat are probably like, oh, my God, that sounds so bad. But until you have to live on a boat, it changes everything. I mean, it was... Yeah, it was cool, but living my on it... My dog almost died. My, di my dog fell away, and we couldn't find him. Oh, right. We had yeah. Zeus, and we had Ranger. Yeah. So we had the Pitbull, and we had the Rhodesian Ridgeback. Couldn't find my dog for five minutes or whatever, and then... We ended up going down, her other dog like alerted us, and we went down the end and like looked around, couldn't find him. Look in the water, you know, like the little, uh, the marina, like the dogs, they got the poles that hold it all up. Like my dog was wrapped around just like with his hands here, and his nose was like barely out. So, he like, was tired. He was, he was in the water and he almost drowned, but he just grabbed onto a pole and we happened to find him. And that's Zeus, who you see now, like the famous Zeus. Uh, <laughs> Who's got a pretty decent following on social media? Um, so <laughs> we call him a human, basically, but yeah. So, so yeah. So uh, anxiety. So I uh, like if you've been in marinas at night, spiders come out at night, and, and there were millions. Like of the water spiders, I think is what they're called. The the orange up high looking, just the the just. They eat mosquitoes, and they don't bother me, so... So there's, like, millions of them So anyway, so I have real bad anxiety, and, like, uh, one of my biggest fears is spiders. And so we got in, I guess the the, the sun went down, and I remember, like, I was going to go outside to use the restroom because there wasn't one that worked inside the boat at all. And so I opened the door, um, and... All I saw was like hundreds and thousands. I think there was like one light on outside yeah, so you could thousands, see. Thousands. Literally thousands. I, I told I, him. I said, don't look up. This, this Just don't millions, look up. There's millions of spiders in this thing. And so that sucks whenever you got to use the bathroom. <laughs> you can't go outside. And you already like, hate your situation to begin yeah. with. So And so I ended, up, I ended up going into like a full-blown panic attack. And like one of the worst... I've had top five panic attacks I've ever had. Um, and I end up just like laying down. I end up, I, I don't even hardly remember. And so the thing, whenever I have bad anxiety or panic attacks, like I'd have like a, some memory loss. So like some things are fuzzy, but all I remember is like completely like not having control of my body to where like I was just shaking. Um, was well, you, like you went down and you laid in the, yeah, the twin bed and then you just started shaking and, and sweating and worrying about having a heart attack and it's just scary. Yeah, that was that was a really scary moment. It sucked and I think we we didn't I don't know how much longer we stayed in the boat or if we left the next day. Oh no, I I, I literally think we left the next day. Yeah. Like yeah. the next day. <laughs> yeah. And I also remember the <laughs> I was like, I don't Gosh. even care where we live. We could live on the I don't even remember there. everything either, but I remember having, what was it, like Chips Ahoy with me because obviously ice cubes um, or anything cold works for anybody, but it was really Colton's go-to because it's just kind of a distracting, calming sort of thing and you could put it wherever you need be. Um, but yeah, I just <laughs> I just remember you... you as a as a spouse and and I hate to laugh but as a spouse and as a person that doesn't struggle 
in the same way with anxiety because anxiety is so broad and, and yet the same. I, I mean, I won't go into all that, but, um, as a spouse, it was, it's hard because it is really a mental game. It really is up to you to talk to yourself, right? I mean, and, and know that this feeling is not only not going to hurt you, but it's not, maybe, depending on the situation, it's not real. So as a person, and I, I don't remember how long we had been together at that point, and I knew a lot, and I'm I'm like raised from nurses, so I love to be needed, and I think I knew a decent amount of stuff, but anyways, um, yeah, it's hard to just sit there, and you can only rub his back so much, or rub his hair so much, and, and tell him that even if you get bit by a spider, it doesn't hurt that bad so much, so, um, yeah, I just remember having cookies, and I tried to, like, offer him a cookie, and I, he was like, I can't, and I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, do you want a cookie? I, I think in the moment, like, you just started, I mean, you kind of bent, I think, or this is where, like, anxiety can cause relationship issues, especially, like, family members and stuff like that, but, like, uh, more than anyone, like, the person you're closest to, because it's easy to get mad at them, and I remember getting right. there, like, you know, because I just wanted to scratch my head or scratch my back or whatever, and I still ask her to scratch my head, like, every day almost, but, like, it's just like you rely on the other person to do it and like if she wasn't doing it good enough or something like I remember like you're not doing it this way and like and not every time but yeah it's just, just like I was thinking that she was going to be the one that pulled me out of that panic attack and in the moment you think the other person will pull you out but like eventually I was able to get out of it maybe but that was like a long it was like I feel like 45 minutes an hour maybe it was, an hour it was the longest one I I shaking. I don't even know if we've had a. I don't remember a longer one really. No, um, I've had one. I, yeah, but you just feel helpless. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so hard. I couldn't do anything, and so it, eventually it was me. It was me that had gotten out of it, but I thought that it was her that pulled me out, of it. and that's where it's so easy to become dependent on the other person because they help you, um, and then you eventually feel better, and then you think it's them, and then now you're. This is where, like, you start becoming very dependent, uh, mm -hmm. codependent on if the you other will. person. And, but if you don't have that issue and you just, like, have other things that help you, you know, you might think that drinking or smoking or going to do this or, or just shutting yourself down and not going out, you know, uh, might be the thing that helps you. And it's so easy to get caught up in that mindset of just thinking that other things will help you. And then the moment... That you think other things will help you, you are no longer in control. So, um, I guess trying to reflect back on that story as to like what I could have done better, or what I could have done different, or what I did do, or what I didn't do. Like, I would say if I could go back, I would, I would have had that panic attack ninety five percent of the time less had I, you know, just reminded myself that. Nobody else is going to get me out of this but me. Well, and the fact that also... I'm in control. There wasn't, uh, like, a danger that was going to be life-threatening. I didn't really think about that, though. And, like, whenever, really? whenever you're having a panic attack, no, nah, I wasn't... I don't know, it's hard because, yes, I was thinking I was having a heart attack, but, hell, every panic attack I had, I was thinking I was having a heart attack. It was more... I don't know. I didn't have any realizations of things that, so I, but looking back now, I would say like, I, yeah, I, I you actually might be right. Just like the, well, so yeah. that I'll be okay. When, like the moment I think you know that you'll be okay and that you'll survive another day, you'll get through the night, then I think. Well, and here's a question, I guess, um, with me knowing you're a Navy person, obviously I'm not, whatever. Um, with me knowing that the spiders aren't necessarily going to hurt you, if we could even go down to that basic sort of level um, with either trusting what you know or trusting what that person is with you is saying, how could you get through that maybe? Just just with specifically what started the anxiety, which was the spiders. So although, yes, spiders hurt and this, that, and the other, like, to be able to not be thrown into a panic attack that disables you, even from the basic level of spiders, maybe maybe what's a 
sort of thing that know, you could. I, I almost feel like the spiders are pretty much an irrelevant. It started it though, part, so I'm just asking. Part, I know, but but it's like it's like I could say like driving uh, itself gives panic attacks, and like a lot of people that have different triggers, it could be just seeing somebody drive by because I used to have, have freak out when people would drive by the house. Like mm-hmm. it could be anything. It just like anything could cause anxiety, but I think like just down to its basic level, just trying to understand that I was in control. That That's exactly what I was going to say. It's just maybe just the basic level of I am in control, being yeah. in control. But That's, I what I, That's so weird. I was yeah. going to say that, yeah. Uh, but I don't think that night I realized that I was in control. I, all I think that no. was you, I felt that you had gotten me through it and that I just was going to make it through the night. And a lot of times when you have panic attacks, like if you know, like, you know, I, I'll make it through till tomorrow, then your panic attack will subside and then tomorrow you just deal with it again. Uh, and then this is like the perpetual like anxiety cycle of just like, okay, well, you know what, I'll make it through this trip, I'll make it through this date, I'll make it through this night and then you just like but then i don't even want to worry about tomorrow right now because you don't have the capacity. or even just like wanting to just wait to go to sleep so that you can yeah. not have to do anything for mm-hmm. however many hours you sleep yeah and that was which <laughs> is like, not a way to live sleep was like my favorite time of the day it was like i hear that it now is the opposite it now, is now it is it's annoying <laughs> i love waking up like when i wake up i'm so bubbly and happy i'm not in pain um, I'm just like super happy in the mornings and I hate going to bed. Whereas in the past, like I could not, I would lay in bed all day, every day, just trying to go to sleep. Yeah. And that's, that definitely could spiral into a lot of different more stories that we'll get to. But, um, yeah. It's... I guess. All right. So I guess now like, well, so I'll try to, and I'm just doing this on the spot. So now I'll try to think of a major, just one major takeaway three sentences or less, maybe one sentence, and you give your own takeaway. Um, if you're going to go first, because I don't know. Okay. No, um, no, 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 no. I was just, I was yeah, pausing as I was yeah. thinking, but yeah, you know I'm always on to go first. Come on. I always got something to say too. Let me think. Um, okay. I mean, I don't want it to be basic, so I don't want it to be just like, be in control or no, you can do this or whatever. I think, I don't know. I don't even want you to go first because I feel like yours is going to be really different than mine. But just from my perspective and my own anxiety and my own fears and whatever, if I were to put myself in his shoes in that situation, I would be able to try and hold on to, um, knowing that I'm not in imminent danger. For me, that's, that's what I get fearful of is like mega pain or death or just danger in general. So I think for the majority of times that I've really panicked, I can try my best to do that. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not actually having a heart attack. This is not actually, my organs aren't actually shutting down. My blood vessels aren't actually going to explode, whatever it may be. You know, I'm just, anxiety is crazy. Everybody's different. So I don't know. I guess that's mine is majority of the time. The fear is just that it's just fear. It's not real life danger. That's me. (laughs) Thank you. Um, mine, and it's, it's, it's kind of deep. So, like, just imagine, like, you know, if we were sitting across the table right now, and I could tell you, like, you know what, I can make myself, I can, I can tell you, I can, like, literally make my entire body start shaking right now, on command. And I could do it, and I could snap my fingers, start shaking um, uncontrollably. Like, I feel like that would actually be something that's like, wow, it's crazy that you can actually do that. If I could say, like, Hey, I can literally hold my hands here and start dropping sweats, you know, dropping like drops of sweat right here. Would that be cool? Like, yes, it would. Like the fact that you could do that. But the thing with anxiety, that's exactly what I was doing. And that's exactly what you do. Whenever, imagine like being able to make your heart palpitate on command from your brain. Okay. So now 
And like, so... Well, your arm hurt. Yeah, yeah. Or there's Sorry. shooting pain down your left arm. Imagine, like, I can make my hands and feet stop working. I can, I can make my vision blurry from my brain. Like, these are incredible, almost like, to the normal person that doesn't have anxiety, if I were to do this, they would say I have a superpower. It's like literally a superpower. So imagine, what I would say the takeaway here is if you can wrap your brain and wrap your head around, and I know you can because if you have anxiety and you're able to cause these physical symptoms, you have a smart and beautiful mind. And so if you're So you able, can do the yeah, opposite, exactly. So I, so I already know, anyone watch this, I know that you can wrap your head around the fact that you can cause this to your body you can also cause your body not to do it. You can cause yourself right. to stop. You know, like, just because you start the engine doesn't mean you can't turn it off. Right. And so I would say the biggest takeaway is, like, yes, you can have the shooting pain. And, like, yes, it wasn't the spiders that made me shake. My head made me shake. So if mm -hmm. my head made me shake and my head made my chest hurt, my head made me sweat and the palpitate and the blurry vision and all that stuff, my head can also stop the shaking. It can stop the sweating. It can stop the shakes, the chest pain. And right. eventually, it always does. And if you've had a panic attack and you're watching this, your body has done the same thing too because you've experienced these and you're not right now at this very moment, right? So your body is able to do it. So just wrap your head around that. That's my takeaway on this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This is the first time we did this. I like yeah, it. I like it. Yeah. I, like it. I hope, you I like hope it. we're at least entertaining and you, yeah, you definitely get at least one takeaway. I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how um, and I like how we kind of it did evolves. it on the spot. Yeah. Well, obviously evolves, but I think it's going to be interesting how to see our different takeaways. Because mm -hmm. I feel like mine was different, but that's cool. That's yeah, fun. we're different. So, all right. Yes. So fun. Love Loved it. We'll see y'all on episode two. Love you.